Hey guys, welcome to Mixed Fractions, Unit 1, Section 6. So these two RNA questions here, um, I'll just give you a minute to do these if you haven't already. Uh, take a crack at these, pause the video right now while you work, and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to, to try those. Um, if they went fine, then go ahead and skip this. Uh, part and skip ahead to mixed fractions when I actually teach the remainder of the lesson. But if they didn't go so well, uh, then what I'll do now here is take them up uh, one by one so that you can see maybe where you went wrong. All right, so for question one, um, what we're going to do, of course, is work with uh, any anything that is bound by a lower rank operation. So we have this minus sign right in the middle, right? And we can work on this fraction and we can work on this. Um, so, of course, uh, first of all, we have a number times a fraction. So we have two numerators, right? So we're going to go minus 2 times 1, and that brings, um, that brings the 2 up there, essentially, 2 times 1. And we leave the negative out front. And then uh, we're going to have minus 3 times, of course, we have to work inside the bracket first, right? Um, because brackets are the boss. Let's, uh, let's flip this fraction around and multiply, take the reciprocal and multiply. And that'll be our first step. Okay, <clears throat> so of course, uh, what I did there, just a reminder, is that I took 3 and 4 from the fraction above, flipped them upside down, which is the reciprocal of 3 quarters, so we have 4 thirds, and changed the division sign to a multiplication. And this is always something that should be done on a first step, on your first step, if it is possible to do that. Okay, so, um, so we're going to have negative 2 over 7. Remember, we can't subtract here yet, because there's a multiplication between 3 and whatever happens in this bracket, right? So we need to leave this here, this minus 3, while we work with what's inside the bracket. Okay, so now we could just go 3 times 4 on the top and 2 times 3 on the bottom, and that would be fine, and we would just have to reduce that fraction later. Instead, um, what I'd like to do here is cross-cancel. So here we have a 3 on top and a 3 on the bottom. Both of those are divisible by 3, right? So we can divide this by 3, get 1, divide that by 3, and get 1. And of course, we have a, we have a multiple of 2 in our 4 and our 2, right? So a common factor there, we can uh, divide this by 2 and get 2, and divide this by 2 and get 1. And so what we're left with here is... Uh, is 1 over 1 times 2 over 1. Okay, let's take another step here to uh, to simplify. So really, what we all, all we have here is 1 times 2, right? So this is really just 2. Because these numerators, these 1s here in the numerators, don't really do anything. All right, and so we can take our uh, one more step here without touching this negative 2 sevenths, and multiply 3 times 2, which is minus 6. All right, we're getting there. So now we have, uh, we basically have um, minus 2 sevenths minus 6, right? So because we have a fraction and a, and a whole number here, or an integer rather, um, we need to write these both with a denominator of 7, a common denominator. Um, in this case, we're always looking for the lowest common multiple, right? We're looking for the... Uh, with, of the of the bottoms and of course seven is right it's the highest one so we're going to have to use that we can multiply this by seven um, and we're going to get uh, equals minus two over seven minus something over seven so of course uh, we're going to have to multiply six by seven it's going to be 42 and that's going to give us our minus well we, now we can add the numerators right so two and 42 and that gives us negative 44 over 7. Okay, this next one, number 2, um, well, I'm noticing right away that we're going to be we're probably going to be able to do some cross-canceling here to make this a lot faster than just multiplying everything out. Uh, but let's, first of all, let's, uh, let's uh, invert and multiply here. Let's take the reciprocal of 7 uh, over 21. So we'll have 66 over 22 times 21 over 7, and then times 3 over 8, and times minus 24 over 15. So that's not subtraction here, right, guys? This is multiplication, 3 eighths times negative 24 over 15. Um, just something to be clear about. 
Okay, so cross canceling, what we can do is look for common factors um, all across the multiplications that, that are together. So here we have one, two, three, four things that are all together as part of a string of multiplications. And whenever you have things that are attached to each other through multiplication like this, then any time that, um, that you can see any common factors um, on the top or the bottom, you can cross cancel, right? So I'm just gonna use red again here. So look at this very first fraction, right? Here we have 66 divided by 22, right? Now we could just divide actually 66 by 22 straight out, right? Because that uh, 66 is divisible by 22, that's just three. Okay, and it so happens that uh, 21 over 7 as well um, is all is just 3. And this is uh, this is actually a way, a way of cross-canceling. You could actually just divide 27 by 7, right? We get 3. And 7 by 7, we get 1, right? So cross-canceling and uh, it would give us the exact same thing here. But, uh, but this division works out. So let's continue with the next part of this multiplication. Okay, so 3 eighths times 24 over 15, and there's a negative sign there. Well, again, let's check for some common factors, right? Well, notice how we have two that are divisible by three, the three and the 15. And it doesn't matter that they're on top. They're not on top of each other, right? We can still cross cancel because this is within a multiplication. So, uh, so we can divide <clears throat> this three by three and get one and this by three and get five, right? And then the eight and the 24, these have a common factor of eight. So let's divide them both by eight right and we get those and so now we can basically go ahead and simplify and write this next line so we're gonna have times one over one which is one right and then over here we're gonna have negative three divided by five so this is minus three over five okay let's let's start working here now through the multiplications um well we have three times three which is nine times one we don't need to include that uh, of course, that's not going to change anything. And then we're going to multiply that by minus 3 over 5. So a number times a fraction. So we have uh, 9 times 3. This is going to be minus 27. And we leave the 5 alone on the bottom, which is our answer. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out if you needed the help. Um, and of course, I should should mention that uh, if you skipped, skipped ahead to this part, mixed fractions, um, I did quite a lot of cross cancelling up there, and um, so if you want some review on that, feel free to read the, uh, to watch that video, that part of the video. Mixed fractions. So really, like I said um, earlier in class, we don't really work with mixed fractions in high school very much. Essentially, we just convert them to improper fractions. But as a general rule, okay, if you're given mixed fractions in a problem, the answer may be stated as a mixed fraction. However, improper fractions are the most used types. Now notice how it says the answer may be stated as a mixed fraction, right? You can just state it as an improper fraction and I would be perfectly happy with that in this course. Um, so if you hate mixed fractions, just complete, just always make a habit of converting them, right? To improper fractions. All right, let's look at example one. So how do we work with mixed fractions? Well, really, right, we just have a bunch of, uh, we have a bunch of whole numbers and we have, in this case here, we have say, uh, we have two 11s plus three of an 11, right? And so the key here, whenever you're working with these, is just to convert them all first to improper fractions. Okay, so we're gonna go two times 11, um, which is 22, and then we add three, and it gets us to 25. And you can go straight to the answer like this. <laughs> okay, and just, uh, just literally convert it straight up. One times nine is nine, plus two is 11, so we have 11 over nine. And now we're ready to uh, to find a common denominator, right? And this time, well, 11 times 9 is probably the only option because there's there's nothing in, there's no, no common multiple below just multiplying 11 and 9. And so we're going to end up with, uh, let's see, 200 and, oh, well, 11 times 9 is 99, right? Don't want to skip ahead here too much. So we have 99 on both sides. And... Um, in order to get from 11 to 9, we have to multiply by 9, right? So we're going to just kind of go 25 times 9. That happens to be 225. And on this side, we'll go 11 times um, <clears throat> times 9. Or rather, this one's times 11, right? 11 times 11. Because we're going from 9 
to 99. And doing that gives us 121. Now when we subtract those, we get 104 over 99. And that is our answer. Okay, uh, let's see. Show tabs and commands. I'll just box that to make it look nice. All right, let's look at B. So again, um, here we're just going to convert this to mixed fractions, right? So we can go 7 times 9 plus 5, and that gets us 68 over 9 plus 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 7. Um, so that gives us 13 over 2. All right, now this time, again, um, our lowest common multiple between 9 and 2 is going to be 18. So um, we can just multiply these. And this one gets multiplied by, let's see, well, we're doubling it, right? So this times 2 gives us 136. And on the right side, we're multiplying by 9. Right? So we got to multiply 13 by 9 is 117. And so the total here, if you add these together, because uh, we have 18s now, on the bottom is 253 over 18. Okay, and these are kind of big numbers, right? Um, I probably wouldn't give you numbers quite this big on a test or a quiz, uh, especially if I wasn't allowing calculators. Um, but uh, but certainly for something like this, you could just kind of punch some of these n bigger numbers and calculations into the calculator um, or do them by hand, because I know some of you have learned how to do all that stuff quite proficiently. All right, um, here we've got some mixed fractions and we're multiplying them. So the same thing though, we just are going to convert them to uh, improper fraction. So this is going to become 22 over 5, and we have multiplication, and this is going to become negative 19 over 6. All right, now before we just start multiplying the tops and the bottoms, let's see if there's any common factors. Well, hopefully, hopefully you see it. Here we have an even number and an even number, right? We can actually reduce those. We're going to have 11 over 5 times negative 19 over 3. So we can divide those both by 2. Right? I'll just show that up here. Divided by 2, divided by 2. And so we end up with, um, well, if we multiply these, we're going to have negative 209 over 15. And let's just draw a box. I should do one over here too. There we go. And since we've cross cancelled everything, right, we don't have to check this answer for any common multiples, which is, uh, or to see if there's any, any terms, right, if we can div divide out any common factors is the right language, pardon me. Um, so we can just move along. All right, so this time here we have a division. So let's first of all convert this to a improper fraction and we'll multiply. And we have, uh, let me see, oops. Let's just divide. Let's divide first, and we'll, we'll do our conversions. We're going to have 32 over 5. Now we'll invert and multiply, right? Because this is the point where we're dividing by a fraction. And so we do this. Okay, so the question now is, are there any, anything, is there anything to cross-cancel? Well, um, these are mostly odd numbers except for this, so there's no common there's no common factors of two in any pair of numbers here, right? Um, really, I think that this is as good as it gets, and so we're going to end up with 115 over 224 for the final answer. And those are now complete. So that's how to add and subtract, multiply, and divide mixed numbers. And really, the only thing that we did here, which is anything different than, than last time, right, is, is convert them to improper fractions first. All right, so let's look at example two. So example two says, if a two and a half inch nail is hammered through a board that's one and three eighths inch thick um, and into a support beam, how far into the support beam does it does it extend? Well, here's our here is our board, right? That's one and three eighths inch thick, right? Indicated by the little uh, curly bracket here, and here's our nail, which is two and a half inches, and here's this support beam that we have, and we don't know how deep that is, but the question is saying, if you see right here, how big is this part, right? That that uh, 
the part the part of the board that the nail penetrates into so this uh <clears throat> this length so th think about this for a moment how would you do this problem pause the video and see if you can uh if you can compute the answer set up uh some fractions and see how you do so hopefully you had a chance to try that and uh if it didn't go so well or either way we're going to take this up right now so <clears throat> so let's see well <clears throat> We know that the, the nail is two and a half inches thick, right? Or long, rather, right? So, so what that means is that the part of it that stays in the, in the top board, right? This header board up here um, is this much of the nail, right? So the rest goes into the support beam below. So we need to take this part, this length, right? Off, off of the nail because the remaining length is going to be what goes into the board. So we can just use a subtraction, right? So we can say, um, oops, what we can do is we can say, well, <clears throat> we can take the length, the total length of the nail, two and a half, right? And we could subtract one and three eighths. That's the thickness of the support beam. And we can compute this. Now, some of you, I should say, some of you have actually learned to do this subtraction directly, right? You've learned to actually just subtract. You go two minus one, right? And then figure out how to arrange the fractions, um, the fractional part, uh, so that you can do a subtraction with that. Um, and I'll just show basically how some of you guys do this. But really, what, what some students will do is say, oh, well, I've got one half and three eighths. So why don't I just write this as four eighths, two and four eighths. Um, and then here I have three eighths, right? So we're going to be subtracting one from two and three from four, which gives us one and an eighth. Okay, and you know what? That's fine. Um, there's a few nuances in doing it this way that um, that you have to be aware of. And uh, because we just don't work with mixed fractions very often in uh, in high school, we just don't really worry about looking at all those nuances. Instead. What I encourage you to do is just convert these to mixed fractions and be done with it. Pardon me. Let's write this properly. Three eighths. All right. So we would have five over two minus eleven over eight. And so um, writing this one over eight gives us twenty over eight minus eleven over eight. And our final answer would be. 9 over 8. Now you could, right, you could go ahead now and just take and take 8 out of this 9 and write it again as 1 over uh, 1 and 1 eighth um, and state your answer with, uh, you know, 1 and 1 eighth of an inch, which would look nice. But um, what I said before is you can just say, uh, you can just state your answer. By the way, this little three dots, this means therefore. It's like a mathematical way of starting your, your final sentence. Therefore, the nail... extends nine eighths of an inch into the beam. Okay. Turn the page. Now at the top of this here is a little class problem that I typically do when we're in class. Um, you're welcome to try this problem if you like and see how you do. Um, and but for now, for the purposes of this video, we're actually going to skip this one and go to example three. So example C three, pardon me, says determine the volume of the cube on the right. So the volume of a cube is really just the length of the cube times the depth times the height or length times width times height, depending on what variables that you've used before. So we can write this length times width times height or because for a cube um, every side right every one of these dimensions is the same sometimes you actually just see this um, as side length times side length times side length because really it's this same length times this length times this length and they're all the same now there's another way of writing this if you have something times itself right uh, remember, this is a power, right? It's like a power because we're seeing it multiple times. There's three of them. So we can write this as S cubed, S to the power of three. 
But we know that our side length is actually, in this case, s is equal to 2 and 3 quarters, which we know is going to be um, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3, 11 over 4 centimeters. So, um, so our volume really, in this case, is going to be um, 11 over 4 times 11 over 4 times 11 over 4. This kind of hints at what's coming next. Um, we're going to learn how to simplify these powers, powers of fractions, um, in the next lesson, or possibly the one following. But, but in any case, um, this is just a series of multiplications where we can multiply 11 times 11 times 11 on the top and on the bottom, 4 times 4 times 4. So doing this gives us 1,331 on the top and on the bottom, 64. Okay, and so really here we have <clears throat> we have kind of a, a bit of a yucky number, but we can state our final answer with our crazy mixed fraction, or improper fraction, I should say. Therefore, the volume is 1,331 1, over 64 centimeters cubed. So if you wanted to convert this to um, a mixed fraction, again, really, you could just divide all the 64s, remove all the 64s from this big number, 1,331, um, and write it as write it with 64 as our whole number right, that comes in front. And I think in the textbook, though, it, you're going to see it like this. OK, so um, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, but you can leave it just like that. OK, one last example here. Mr. Rock is installing new hardwood flooring. So he bought boards that are 10 feet long, 3 quarters of an inch thick, and 11 over 24 feet wide. To determine the number of boards Mr. Rock would need for a 10 foot by 16 and a half foot room. All right, well, let's just kind of draw this room. I should say, pause the video here. Again, pause the video. See if you can do it yourself. Okay, so here's the solution. So the room is going to be, let's just draw a little rectangle here. We know that it's going to be um, 16 and a half feet long, right, by 10 feet wide. And this, this little apostrophe here means feet, all right? Okay, so he's going to be putting the boards, right, like this. He's going to lay in them like this. And the nice thing is, um, Notice that the boards are already 10 feet long, right? That was stated here, right, in the question, that they're 10 feet long. And so the boards don't need to have their ends cut at all, right? We, he can just start laying these boards in like this. But the question is, right, how many of them is he going to need, right, to, to fill the whole room with all of these boards that are 11 over 24, right, 11 24ths of a foot wide? So, well... Um, the number of boards, right, the number of boards required is going to require an operation. Think about this for a minute, right? We've got a width of 16 and a half feet, but we need to, right, figure out how many times, how many times we, we can put in a, a board that's 11 24ths of a foot wide, right? That's what we need to do. Now, this is in feet, right? This is in feet. It's not in inches. And so is the width of the room. So our units are the same. What this means is we can literally take the width of the room, that's 16 and a half um, feet, and we can divide it by the width of the board, which is 11 over 24. Okay, and this this value here will give us the number of boards because um, because... This is going to tell us exactly how many times 11 over 24 goes into 16 and a half. So let's convert this to, to a mixed fraction. So we're going to have 33 over 2, right? And while we're at it, um, let's flip, right? We'll invert and multiply. So we're going to have 24 over 11. We'll bring it back up here. Notice how we have some common factors, right? Which is kind of nice. 
Um, we can cross cancel. We can divide these both by 11, right? There's going to be a three there and a one. And these can both be divided by, tw by two, right? So it's going to be 12 and it's going to be one. And so what we're really going to have is three over one, which I'll omit, times 12 over one, which I'll omit. So we're going to have three times 12, which is 36. Isn't that a nice round number? Beautiful. So we can state our final answer. Therefore, 36 boards are required to complete the floor. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the lesson. Um, you have basically for this section, you have uh, textbook questions, right? And um, they're assigned from two different sections. Okay, so I've taken a cross section of page 16 and a cross section of page 28 um, and, and work through those as best you can. Good luck with them and we'll see you in class.